welcome everyone with a workshop on professionality of teachers. Uh, my name is uh, Bas, Bas Rosenbrand. I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I will first introduce myself and then um, I'll explain what I want to share with you. And if you have any questions or please raise your hand or uh, put it in the chat and I will um, take care together with Gabriel if, uh, if I can answer the question. Um, I come from the field of education. I've had a training in primary education. Uh, I didn't fit into the system, I found out. So um, I had to find another job or change the system. It became changing the system. So short story, uh, in 2001, we started our own school in the Netherlands where we wanted to co-create a school together with the children and the teenagers. Um, our school existed for eight years. Um, we, it turned out to be, it became a national movement of those schools. Uh, our school had to stop because of finances. And afterwards, I've been guiding a lot of innovative schools in the Netherlands, in Poland, in uh, Romania, in London. Um, and at the moment, I, together with others, we set up a teacher training for a Bachelor of Education at the University of Applied Sciences in Leiden. It exists now for one and a half years. We have about 50 students, uh, adults ranging from 18 till uh, over 50 years old. Um, and the purpose of this training is to, um, to serve the innovative schools uh, with a pedagog pedagogical um, base um, and to create the training where the people learn the skills that are needed in those schools because the traditional teacher training didn't match with those schools. Um, so I'm doing this with a lot of joy. And one of the subjects that I teach there uh, is professional self-understanding. And that's a subject that comes from uh, a Belgian professor, Geert Kerchtemans, I will explain later. Um, I was asked to give uh, workshops in this, this festival. Uh, I met Henry, uh, uh, I think about two years ago now in the UK. Um, and I was very honored. Uh, and I was thinking what, what are the most valuable workshops that I can give at the moment. And I chose for this subject um, because what I found is that um, in alternative education, um, the name is alternative. So it's next to mainstream education. And it sounds like it's not serious. Ah, oh, it's something alternative. But actually, um, it is very serious. And we all want the best for the children. But what is the base? And, and how can we explain what we're doing? And what I found out is actually when you take all the new science and all the knowledge of, of development of children, then actually most of the innovative schools are doing what the science tells us or what, what psychology tells us. So in this workshop, I want to give some framework or uh, what you can use to um, explain yourself in what you are doing or have the conversation together with, with you as a team or with the parents or with with, uh, with society. Um, we had a school with, with uh, at first 18 and later 45 children and teenagers, and we got a lot of visits from the inspection. And the idea in society was, well, if you let children choose for themselves uh, as a teacher or staff member, you do nothing. You just sit back and you wait for the initiative from the children. But this was not what we did. What we wanted to find out was what's the, what do children need? And the space that we created was the space where things could emerge and where we could find out what children need. But if you start with a program already, you won't find out where they come uh, with themselves. So, um, the inspectors came and one of the inspectors said, well, actually, my mind has changed because when I see you, what you need to be able to do is much more than being a teacher in a classroom. 
it's even more, it's not less like what in society people are telling, you need to know more. And I was very happy that he noticed this. What, what we did was um, what you could now call um, um, unconscious capability. We did what we did and we thought it's so logical, it's so, uh, so everybody understands, uh, all the other schools from the national movement, they will understand what we're doing. But to our surprise, um, schools did very different things, things that we would never do. So apparently uh, there are different interpretations or uh, things that we thought were logical were not so logical. Uh, and in this way, we became very um, aware of what we were doing. And we could more and more explain what we were doing. This is also what I do in the teacher training. Um, So, um, like I said, we all want the best for the children. So we use all the knowledge and everything. Um, the problem is that we have to deal with different paradigms. Uh, the, the society is becoming more and more goal-oriented. Education is becoming more and more goal-oriented. Uh, we set a goal and then we, we move towards this goal. In management, it works like this and the goal is mostly uh, or more and more are making a lot of money um, and then uh, everything is um, uh, turned into a system so you make a lot of money. In education, um, the habit is to tell before a lesson what the goal of the lesson is. Um, recently I heard from a teacher or somebody who came into a school with young children. Uh, she had an activity with, uh, with a suitcase and it was, she opened the suitcase because there was something special in there and then one of the children raised his hand and said, what's the goal of this activity? So it's so um, almost ingrained. Uh, it's, there is no space for exploration or, or those things. But how to explain that this is also education? Um, in, um, um, usually, you, you have the golden circle of uh, Simon Isaac. It's the why, the how, and the what, and that's quite known. If you create your vision, you ask the why, why are we doing this? Uh, how are we doing this? And what are we doing? Um, Parker Palmer wrote a book about the uh, heart of education. And he said, um, but there's also the who. Who is teaching? Who is doing this? Which person is doing this? So you have the why, the how, the what, and the who. And the who is very important. Many, many educational philosophers or, or um, practitioners, or uh, they said in their own way, uh, Freinet said it like this, uh, you don't teach what you tell the children, you teach who you are. That's what children take, not what you tell them. Um, and everybody said it in their own way. Rudolf Steiner said it in his way and, and other people said it in, in, their, in their own way. Um, so it's very important to know who you are. Um, and that's part of being professional. And this is, this is what uh, the Belgian professor, Geert Kerftemans, um, he did research on what makes teachers professional. Um, and he calls this a professional self-understanding. So it's about a process of knowing who you are, what your ideas are. It's about understanding and understanding is a subject and it's a process. You have the understanding of myself and you have the process of understanding, of processing what's happening and uh, what's going on. So it has those both dimensions. Um, and together, um, uh, it's this understanding and, he says, your own theory on what you think is good education. That makes you professional. Um, he says that um, as a teacher or a staff member or a guide or how you want to call it, you make a lot of choices during the day. It's not like, oh, we have this system and we apply it. You work with people. And people are unpredictable. Children are unpredictable. Uh, you have your good days and your bad days. And uh, 
uh, something happens unexpectedly outside of the school or in society that has an impact on, on what's happening. Um, this child is different than the other child. So during the day, you make a lot of choices. You pay attention to this child, but not to the other one. You leave the other for today or maybe for some time. Um, and you know the talents of this child, so you, you, you react differently. And you don't always know uh, what the effect of your actions will be. That's the uncertainty of being a teacher or working with people. You don't know. Uh, and sometimes it works out well, and sometimes it doesn't work out well. This is part of the job uh, of your work with people. Um, a Dutch um, professor said, uh, teaching is an action science. So you have the knowledge about how education works, how learning works, how the psychology of people, but you have to act in the moment. You cannot do uh, a test and have a hypothesis and then do a test and find out how it works. And then you have to act in the moment. Like the same like a doctor. A doctor has all the knowledge of medicine, uh, but he has a patient with a certain context and makes certain decisions. Like a judge. A judge doesn't just apply the rules. There is the context of the, um, the, the person who, who um, uh, I forgot the name, but um, yeah, it, it's the whole context, what he bases his decisions on. You have a policeman. Policeman on the street has to deal with very complex situations. He knows the law and he has his skills, but he has to act in the moment. A teacher too has to act in the moment. What makes a teacher professional is that he or she can explain why he or she made certain choices. It might not have worked out well, but you made your choices based on your knowledge, based on your experience, based on um, uh, your own vision of yourself, based, based on how you feel at the moment. Um, and all this together made you make this choice. Um, so it makes you professional if you can explain why you made this choice. And then you learn and you maybe the next time you make another choice. Um, a professional, and this is the subject I teach with, with, uh, with the students. So in our teacher training, um, we want the students to create their own vision on their own vision on what they think what is good education and what matches with their talents and their view on life. And um, we have not succeeded, I sometimes say, when every student at the end of the training has the same vision. Um, also, that's also what Gerd Kogeman said, um, the teacher training is the only training where you start with about 14 years of experience because we all have been children in schools, maybe you had home education. Um, we have been teenager, we had had a lot of teachers. Um, so you have your vision on what education should be or how it not, should not be. Um, so in our teacher training, we start with our, what's your vision at the moment? You don't create your vision at the end, no, you already have a vision. And with this vision, we, we ask questions about this vision and we come with new perspectives and uh, you get a practice in schools, um, all kinds of, yeah, you come in contact with different kinds of schools. So you create your own, your own vision. And at the end, you can base your vision on your, uh, on theory, on practical experience, on all kinds of uh, pedagogical and, and didactical um, practices. Um, so it's more grounded, but um, at the same time, you will always continue to develop yourself. And that's uh, a lifelong process. So it's never fixed. And this is also why 
Um, as well as Gerard, Gerard Kerchtemans, as, as a Dutch professor says, it's not about your identity. It's not because the identity is fixed that I am this. No, it's about the process in relation with the children, with the society. It's all about relation. Um, and what I found out that the, the uh, education is based on, uh, now it's based on, on the knowledge and the skills that we learn. It comes from the industrial age where education was introduced and we needed to learn the skills like math and reading and writing because the society and the economy needed it. And now we have the 21st century skills. Um, then the question is, who wants the 21st century skills? Is it the children who need it or is it the society uh, and especially the companies who want those skills in their companies? Um, the, the base is not for the 21st century skills is not what do children want or what do children need. It's what the society or the economy needs. Um, the base of education is not relation. And I think that's the core thing of relation and of society and of maybe everything that we do, even trading. The base is relation. Um, but have we learned how to be in relation? Have we learned how to relate to children? Have we learned how to relate to young children? Have we learned how to relate to the parents? Have we learned how to relate to your colleagues? Um, and that's your professionality. And that's about communication. That's about being self-aware. That's about knowing uh, what your past is, what your ideas are, what your dreams are. Um, that's, that's part of professionality. Um, I th when I was thinking about it, I thought, well, I think every subject, you could also put it in the perspective of relation. Now it's always based on knowledge. So you have knowledge about biology. You learn about plants, but what's the relation you have with nature? What's the relation you have with history? History is about relation. I brought this book. Um, Every time I pick it up, I get goosebumps. Uh, it's called The Walking People. And it's the history of the, um, the Iroquois nation, the Native American tribe. Uh, it's their history. And it's written in a sort of half poem, half story like. And why they are, um, what they did was they passed. They didn't pass on what the uh, events were. Like in the Western history, you learn, ah, oh, in, in 1758, this happened, and, and especially these wars happened. And, um, so these were important moments. There is no uh, year in this whole book. It's only stories. And the stories are passed on because the stories are about, are about what people learned. And this is why it needed to be passed on because you, you pass on the learning processes. Um, it's described that the people followed the leader and at a certain moment, the leader noticed that the people were just following and didn't think for themselves. So the leader uh, took a leave and went into the mountains and said, you have to stay here. And, uh, and then the people were on themselves and they had to find out for themselves what, what they wanted. There is a story about uh, the young people who had um, uh, their, their ideas and the older people said, well, you don't have uh, life experience, so okay, you're just young and they didn't take it seriously until they noticed that what they were saying was very valuable. And from that moment on, they called it the new eyes wisdom. So all these stories is their history. Uh, that's a relation. That's a relation with your past, with your ancestors, with the people. That's not, and that's what we miss in education. Um, well, Geert Kaltmans has done his research. Um, uh, actually, also, he, he, he noticed that um, people who work with people, so it's also in, in the, the care, 
um, medical care or uh, people talk about the stories. They talk about stories. When you have teachers together, they talk about uh, uh, all kinds of events that they had with the children or with the staff or, um, and in this way, they, they share their uh, knowledge and their experience. Uh, also, this is professional. Um, so you, th that's different than sharing the, the test scores. That, that sounds a sort of objective, but uh, the stories is not objective, but it's very, very valuable. That's also where you create relation. There are five elements. I will put them in the chat because otherwise of that Gert Kelftemans found out that uh, um, part of professional self-understanding. So it's a description of your self-image. And what's really important, and that's also much more and more known is self-esteem. So what your, how do you value yourself? And the difference between self-esteem and self-confidence is um, like, maybe you were able to play a rock concert before um, 50,000 people, and you have a lot of confidence in this. So that's a sort of self-confidence, but it doesn't mean that you have self-esteem. Self-esteem is that you value yourself. Even if you fail, you still value yourself because you've tried and you, you learn from it. And you, um, um, when you have self-confidence and you fail, you might lack, uh, you get a bump into your self-confidence. So self-esteem is more important. Um, and again, relation. So you get self-esteem when you have a good relationship with your parents, with the people around you, with, with uh, your peers, with, with the teachers or stuff. Um, subjective, subjective evaluation of its own functioning. So you must have an idea of if, you, if what you are doing is okay and why it is okay. Uh, the motivating factors for being a teacher. Why are you a teacher? Are you a teacher just to get paid, to get a job? Do you have a mission? Uh, why do you want to work with children? Um, is it that you want to uh, contribute to their lives? Is it that you want to solve something in your own past? So it's necessary to know. Um, what do you see as your task as a teacher? And what are your expectations towards the future? So now I am this, and in the future, I want to develop in this area, or maybe I want to become a school leader, or I want to work with other, other kinds of children, children in the city or other children. So this is what you need to know, what Geert Kaltemann says, but think for yourself, um, what are, are the elements of professional self-understanding? Um, when I was thinking about relation, I thought, okay, what kind of relations do we have? And I found five, and recently maybe I found another one. Um, this is the, what we see as the usual uh, relation that we have. And that is showing the world. So the teacher shows the world as the world wants the teacher to show the world. So that's about methods. That's about, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're the curriculum that's prescribed by the government. Um, what I see more and more is that, that uh, it's, a, it's a square because in our country, you have more and more those digital boards and some teachers just push the button and the program is running and the children get instructions on in how to write a text or there is a quiz or something. And it's not the teacher anymore who provides the lesson. For me, that's not teaching. That's just, yeah, operating. That's not teaching. 
So this is what we usually see and what we see more and more. But there are other kinds of relations. This is a relation, uh, holding, I call it holding the space. So the child discovers by himself or herself and you are holding the space. You're creating the space in which the child can do this. Uh, and you, it is relation because you really do something. You are aware of what's happening. You are present. Uh, it's not that you act with the children, but you create the space and the safety. Um, another one is this one. It's showing the world as you have learned it. Like the people from the walking people, you show the world to the children or to the teenagers or the young people in what you have learned from the past and how you look at the world. And it's just one perspective. It's your perspective, but it's based on your experience. That's different than just pushing the button of the digital device. This is a learning from the children. So you are the teacher, but you also learn. And sometimes children have to can show you some things that are very valuable. I, I've worked with young children and one of the, the boys was, uh, uh, his father was uh, uh, working in the construction. He was a construction worker. So a very, yeah, low education job. And I had so many nice conversations with him. I once sat next to him and he said, where do all the word, words come from? Why is a car called a car and a bike called a bike? And we were wondering together, oh, that's actually interesting. And at a certain moment he said, um, who was first, God or man? I thought, wow, this is, this is very deep philosophical. Who was first, God or man? And he was five years old. So um, this is very, uh, actually, this is the other relation. Um, this is exploring together. So here, I don't know, the child doesn't know, and we are going to explore together how it works. I like this one the most, but yeah. Um, the, uh, and it's not on purpose like, oh, let, let's, let's pretend that I don't know. So no, it's really you don't know and you explore together. And you have your skills and the children have their, your, their skills. Um, that's a relation. And then lately, when I told this to my students, um, they said, but there's another one. Uh, and that's where you as an teacher or adult, you bring in new perspectives. So you can show what you have learned, but you on purpose, you can bring in new perspectives uh, that are different than yours. So uh, in this way, you can, um, the purpose is to really explore, but also to have people think for themselves. So that this one, but I'm still searching into this one. So these are, these are the, uh, um, the relations that I found. And as a professional teacher, you must be able to uh, handle all these relations. So you must be able to switch from providing knowledge about the world as you know it. Uh, uh, and then maybe one of the children asks a question and you switch to, oh, I can learn from the children or let's explore together. So you have those roles and you must be able to switch. Excuse me, Bas, could you, I, I missed the last one with the triangle. What was the point there of that, um, the last one? It's, um, it's bringing in new perspectives. So maybe not, it's, it, should, it doesn't have to be mine. But for instance, um, I, tell, I tell about uh, my past, but there is another culture in the world who does things very differently. Maybe I don't agree with it, but I bring it in to uh, make you think in a different way and explore it. Okay, yeah. Okay. got it, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I will type the name of the Belgian professor. He has written some things in English as well, but mostly in Dutch. Um, yeah. 
And then um, there are many people who talked about the, um, the purpose of education. What's the purpose? Well, is the purpose knowledge? Is the purpose um, um, uh, serve the economy? Um, and what I found is the um, um, yeah, it's, it's not from me, but but uh, from from others as well. Is that you grow towards adulthood? When you give a lesson, for me the question is: How does it serve? Does this serve? Does this lesson serve the children or the teenagers growing into adulthood? And that's a completely different perspective than with some lessons you think, well, no, it's it's not useful. It's it's a waste of time. Uh, and this notion of adulthood we have lost in our society. We don't really have it. When uh, there, there, somebody wrote that if an alien comes towards uh, this world and does a sort of anthropological research in in adulthood, what he sees is okay. Um, that's the, that's when you get your diploma or your degree from from the the, the school. So somebody. Uh, gives a, a short talk and you get a paper and there's a signature and afterwards you you dance and have a party and drink beer and that's then you're adult or you're adult when you're 18 uh, when you're uh, in, in the Netherlands then you're allowed to vote or you're allowed to drive a car or then you're adult um, but it's not really adulthood it's it, because attitude is an attitude and that's why I like growing into adulthood because we are always growing into adult, adulthood. We come across new situations, especially in these times that we're very, um, we're in a transformation as society. So, wow, how do we deal with these new situations? What's, what's adulthood? Um, We got more or less 20 minutes left. Just don't yes. want to stress yeah. you, but I could imagine that many people want to talk or, or ask many things, at least me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to first stress one, uh, to point one thing, uh, to bring in one more thing, and then, then we can do go to the questions. Um, I wanted to map the, the um, well, we, uh, you have the types of relationship, but um, in our school, and I guess in many of your schools as well, you, you start with space. You don't start with the program. So what are the skills that you need? Uh, what are the skills that you need to, to help the children? And this is based on experience. So uh, one is, I, I will um, also put it in the chat. So you start with holding space, and that's a new skill that you don't learn in regular education. You learn to manage or control, but not holding space. Um, you Then it's watching. It's not observing, so it's not like, but watching what's happening. Uh, what are the children doing? Um, and that you can take the time for it, that's new. In a regular school, you don't really have the time. You're constantly busy. So, but we have the time to really see what's going on. Um, you have informal conversations with the children. Also, this is relation. Um, you can play with them or do activities with them. A, a regular teacher doesn't do this, but this is also a skill that you do a game or uh, um, uh, you join in, in a football game or other activities. You have conversations about what they want or which direction they want to go. Maybe you make a plan to help them or support them. Um, some schools do this. Um, you co-create the lessons with them. Well, really co-creating lessons, that's also a new skill. Um, you make direction in choices. Some children need, uh, for them, it's too much. So what you do is you limit the choices. You, you say, okay, you can do this, this, or this. 
um, you provide an offer in subjects or lessons or, or that they can choose from. Um, sometimes you give instructions, so it's more directive. Uh, you give the lessons. And sometimes what I've learned is you have to take children by the hand. So uh, we had a boy who um, said that he wanted to read and he was uh, 70 years old, but he never took the initiative for it. Um, and at a certain moment, he was offered, okay, you can come, but he didn't come. Uh, at a certain moment, we thought, okay, what's, what's happening here? Because he says that he wants to read, but he doesn't take the actions. Um, so we talked to the parents and we talked with the staff and we found out that actually he was scared to fail. He was already nine years old and he was afraid that if he would start to read that he would fail um, uh, as a nine-year-old in reading. So he didn't want to be confronted with that. Um, so then we thought, okay, uh, he will not come. We have to help him. And then one of the staff members said, okay, now we are going to read. And he learned how to read. And he was so, so grateful that, that we as adults took this step um, because he couldn't have taken it by himself. There was some fear under it. And I've learned, I, I had some more situations where there is a fear under it and maybe it's their own fear or the fear of the parents or fear of society around uh, that's in the way. So then you have to help them. Or maybe there is a, a, a real autistic boy who also needed this hand. So these, this is, these are a lot of skills that you need in, well, let's say our kind of schools. And if you can explain what you're doing and why you're doing these things, um, that, that makes you more professional. You're not just doing something or giving freedom or you're doing much, much more. Okay, last thing. There's, at the moment, there is a, a lot of science that supports this. And I made a list of some subjects. Um, the first thousand days of child, including pregnancy. At the moment, I work with one of the, well, professionals in the world around this subject to set up a center for this knowledge. Uh, what happens in, in this, this area, uh, the subject of bonding, uh, trauma-informed society or trauma-informed education from Gabor Mate, he's an Hungarian. Uh, psychiatrists, in, uh, and he recently came out with a movie about this subject. Influence of nature. In our university, there is people are doing research on this. Uh, Richard Luff is an, a journalist who wrote a book about it, The Last Child in the Forest. Um, we have, in our society, we have a nature deficit disorder. We have too less nature, and that's known, that's more and more seen what the influence is about self-confidence and self-esteem social skills talents um, how learning works we learn more and more about how learning works um, we learn more about brain research recently i learned about young children how brain research works and that it doesn't work to push children if you push children at a very young age um, it can do damage and we know it from brain research um, the, the physical movement in learning, how important it is. Reflex integration is about movement. Influence of healthy food, complexity of systems. Bron van Brenner is a scientist who already after the Second World War explained how systems of influence work. So you have the family, you have the uh, society, um, uh, you have different zones of influence. And the last one, systemic perspective is a new one. Process work, theory, you, uh, systemic constellations. We know more and more about how this works and we you can use it to serve the children, the parents, the families. So if you come with this, you have a foundation for what you're doing and it's science-based. Okay, questions and we have a few minutes left, so welcome. Oh, so great, that's incredible. Thank you very much. Uh, Bruno wrote in the chat, Bruno, I think you can't open your own mic, so I read it for you. 
Um, he wrote, or do you want, well, I read it. I've got a question for the questions and answers moment. How were you able to influence the teacher training program into introducing this mindset in it? My experience as a teacher student at the moment in a Finnish yes. university is that this is such a stiff and closed entity that is far, uh, that is far from being able to modify, be modified. And the small changes that they're happening are actually going to the opposite direction of what we're talking here. Yes. Um, what I've learned is um, uh, don't try to change the system because the system is so incredibly vast or um, it has so much history. And when you start, you have to start new. You have to start again. And you can start small. Um, if you want to change something and you do something completely different in one uh, uh, place, then you change the whole system because you create a new perspective. And so what we did, uh, we started, uh, we were able with, with this teacher training uh, in, within this university to start again. Um, yeah. You raise your hand, Carbion. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. I just raised my hand to show that me as a host yeah. also have a question. Yes, okay, so yes. okay. I don't yeah. want to take. Yeah, so okay. this is how we are. I really... Yeah, I will finish them. Uh, this is how yes, we sorry. are, um, uh, we're able to do it. And the director of the university had his children on uh, uh, yeah, either by school. So I knew him from the past. So he knows what, what this kind of education is. And this gave us an entrance together with all the experience that we have, how to start something within a system, what you can meet and how to deal with this. Um, we, yeah, we managed. So this is, I hope it's enough and not for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really very happy because it's, um, of course, very um, yeah, fundamental points I, I totally agree with. Um, actually, for example, we are working on a response to UNESCO's Futures of Education. And the first two points you said, like the self-education of the adult himself and the relationship work as like the two first pillars of pedagogical work, I totally agree. And I'm so happy, of course, to hear from, from your perspective too. So um, what I wanted to say first is that uh, talking about teacher training, because I'm part of UDEC. I don't know if you know UDEC, the, yes. the European Community of Democratic. And lately, I've been thinking a lot about teacher training. So I'm happy to, to hear that there's something going on in that direction. So I, I will come back to you maybe personally. And what I wanted to ask, because my experience with um, professionals, what you said, like in the relationships and stepping back and creating a space that for many professionals is uh, like a personal issue of um, like they need to feel like you uh, useful they need to like be active and they are like not able to step back and take a passive role and because they need to feel like justify their work to, yes. to do something they don't have like i would even say the personal mat maturity or my, uh, matureness or how you say mm -hmm. to to stand still and don't be like um the center of attention and this yes. to me became a core aspect that many don't have this um, this capacity to, to don't feel needed or useful on this. I have to just find, to find my work. I want to do something. Yes, yeah. What, you, must, you must be able to stay with your discomfort also to remain and not really act directly, but first, yeah, feel into it. And maybe it has to do with you and maybe it has to do with the situation. So there are many elements that can create this, this, this discomfort. But if you act, you don't know where it comes from. So first take a step back and become aware. This is Thomas, can you hear me? Um, um, sorry, Thomas, I, Tobias was raising his hand before. Yes. So Tobias, we will yeah. let Tobias yeah. first and then Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, I just have a quick question. Uh, I'm wondering in, uh, um, in what level uh, you expect uh, self-direction from the students in the teacher training. Um, I know that uh, for me during my own teacher training, it was vital to, to be in the, in, 
you know, in the position to actually think about my own vision, because at first that really wasn't an option. And when I hear you describing that the basis of the teacher training is to to find out what their own vision is, I'm wondering, uh, wondering um, how it goes from there, you know, in what way are they, um, yeah, are they placed in the position to really uh, direct their own uh, training? Yeah. Um, the um how to explain a very short version we have three phases three stages in the training the first stage is that we show uh we show we show the world we show the field of education so there are this kind of schools this the history and these are kind of philosophies and uh, pedagogy the second stage is the practical stage so you you go uh into the school and you work with children and you provide activities and, and you do the things. And the last stage is the, um, um, who are you as an innovator and what do you have to bring as your as a unique person? So what's your own ideas? Um, and we work with what's called learning outcomes. So we have described, you must be able to show these and these skills or this and this uh, vision or, um, and how you do it, is up to you. So we don't do tests. So a few exceptions because of that's the national test, we have to do that. But uh, for the rest, it's your own um, process and your own way how you show that you're able to do these things. That's a short version. Yeah, that's very clear. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thomas, uh, your turn. Thomas. Yeah, just for a few seconds, sir. I just wanted to kind of celebrate the point you were making, Gabrielle, about, and you mentioned, boss, about stepping back and not being the center of attention as an adult in a, in a learning freedom kind of a school. That is a spiritual dimension mm -hmm. of engagement, right? A spiritual awareness that you're centering the other, the young citizen. Um, and it, I, I love the word spiritual, right? Because it goes in such a different direction than uh, teacher training, right? It's, it's, it's such a powerful thing and I think it's vital. And I've been a staff person at a Sudbury model school and I, I've really practiced uh, that kind of engagement. And it's amazing to see what the young people are capable of when they're given some space to practice being bigger and more mature people themselves at all ages. It's, it's, it's a miracle to see what they're capable of. And I'm talking about the judicial committee at the Sudbury School, where they're the, able to be the judge and the jury and you know the defense attorney. They're able to adopt these roles and do it in a way that a lot of adults are, would might not be able to do even. Uh, so it's all a celebration. And big thank boss, big thanks to you, boss, for all this good information. Yeah, thank you. And also um, for me, this is important that uh, taking a step back is still relation because you're still aware of what's happening. You're still there. You're still able to intervene if necessary, but you don't do this, but you're able to do this. So it's it's not just giving space that's why i call it holding the space you're active but you're passive in your actions but you're active in your awareness or in in, in yes and that's a different exactly. yeah 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 i think a key word here is expectation not just the expectation towards the children also the expectation towards the, the adults and I, I mean if we notice even here when we talk about democratic education Many times we point out, oh, the, the pupils have become doctors or judges, or like we even point out that like this, they become something special, you know, and uh, very seldom I hear like, hey, they become a carpenter, a, bu a bus driver, you know, we, we keep on like justifying our work with this expectation that they will become something. I sometimes hear that and like get rid of this expectation is, is um, well, a deep process, but yeah, and I also love Buzz, that you point out the importance of nature, which is what I'm personally missing a little bit also in this democratic movement that we talk a lot about culture and nature is somewhere there, but that there's really this um, nature um, deficit, um, how you say, disorder. disorder yeah. Yeah. 
exactly. So this is a deep thing. And um, yeah, we, we're, for example, a school in nature. And I think this is an important issue to bring up. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, too. Yeah. There's one, one last question, and then we have to close from uh, Roshani. Uh, is there a way to self-evaluate, assess the practice approach? Um, so do you mean um, the, for, the, for the professionals, for the, for the teachers, how, how they assess and evaluate themselves? Yes. Um, well, I, I, am, I am doing, um, in the university, I'm doing my uh, research on this, on this topic, how to know that, that what the people are uh, evaluating and judging how, how this is uh, from high quality. Um, but one of the things is that you should not do it alone. You must, again, you must do it in interaction with the others. You must talk about it. And then you get a different perspective or somebody can ask questions. Um, so the team makes the quality. It's not just the individual, it's really the team. Yeah, and feedback. And, and, and uh, you must plan the moments that you uh, evaluate. What I've learned, the, the, one of the main, uh, yeah, we must stop. Um, um, rhythm. Rhythm is very important. Plan and, and evaluate at, at a certain moment. I hope this was enough uh, answer. Okay. They are asking for contact um, yeah. information, if you can put something into the chat. Yeah, but it's in Dutch. But, uh, the, the training is called Spring. It has a Dutch, a Dutch and a, an English meaning. If you want to send some uh, internship students over, uh, let us know. <laughs> we were <laughs> looking forward to receive some of your students. Yeah, yes. So Would be thank you very, very much, Bas. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And I think the most of the people around here too. So really, really thanks a lot. It was great. Yeah, thank you. Thank too. you. I stopped recording.